Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. We come to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has risen. forward, right? Amen. Amen. And so we want to just give God praise and glory today. Amen. This is the first Sunday of April and we praise God for that. So let's let's um, prepare our hearts and our minds as we move into worship. Amen. We're not going to have any announcement. We try not to have any announcements on the first Sunday. Amen. This is just a sacred Sunday. First Sundays are sacred Sundays to where we serve the Lord's Supper. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, ushers, please let our worshipers in as they are coming in. 
Amen. Let us all prepare ourselves and let's let's stand upon our feet, shall we? We just want to center ourselves and just allow the Lord to come in, prepare our hearts and our minds for what the Lord is about to do. Amen. And we know that Jesus loves us. He cares for us. Some of us has been through some trials. Some of us has been through some tribulation. Amen. But we thank God we're here right now. Amen. Amen. Songwriter said, falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing. I ever done. Let's just close our eyes. Let's close our eyes just for a moment. Ushers, keep the doors. Nobody should be moving, please. This is a special time. This is a special time. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we invite your presence into this place. Somebody came seeking somebody came with pain in their hearts somebody came because they need to be delivered somebody came because they know deep in their hearts Lord that you never gave up on them and that you are forgiving God so Lord we pray that your presence will be a healing presence your presence will be a delivering presence. Your presence will uplift us and that we will not leave the same way we came. But we will leave knowing that we've been in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when we fell in love with you, it was the best thing we've ever done. Come on, let's sing that together. Falling in love. Falling in love. With Jesus, falling in love, falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I ever done. Come on, let's falling in love. Let's sing it one more time. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus, oh, falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I ever, ever done. Come on, in his arms. I feel protected in his arms. I feel protected in his arms, never disconnected, never disconnect. In his arms, I feel protected. I feel there's no other place I'd rather be. Come on, in his arms I feel protected. Whoa, in his arms, in his arms, I feel protected. In his arms I'm never disconnected. I never disconnect. In his arms I feel protected. I feel protected. This place where I rather rather be. Come on, falling in love with Jesus. Ooh, falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love. Ooh, falling in love with Jesus. What the best thing Listen, when we have come into this house together in his name to worship him. Come on, 
you know that we have come into this house together in his name to worship him. Come on, we have we come into this house together in his name to worship Christ. So forget about yourself. Concentrate on him. So forget about yourself. And concentrate on him. In worship him. Come on, forget about yourself. So forget about yourself. On him. Praise the Lord. Come on, come on. Open your mouth and praise the Lord. Give him glory. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for waking me up. Thank you, Lord God, giving me strength in my body. Thank you, Lord God, for being able to walk. Thank you, Lord God, for being able to feed myself. Thank you, Lord God, that you didn't allow anything to come near my dwelling. We thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. God bless you. While we're standing, why don't you greet one another in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just go out your way and greet someone today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.
clap and praise. God bless you. You may be seated just for a few moments. You may be seated just for a few moments. Amen. We are in our season of Pentecost. Amen. This is the season of Pentecost. And uh, we're going to be saying a little bit more about that. But this is, this, is, this is the season. This is a high season for the church. And uh, because Easter time, yeah, Easter time. And, uh, and and this is this is the time where 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 we can uh, really really uh, um, examine ourselves and to to see who we are as the church. Because as we move into as as we move into this season, we know that God has special things for us as the church, and we are deeply grateful for being part of the church. Coming to church every Sunday, wonderful. We want to see you here every Sunday. But there's a purpose for us being here at the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anybody can show up. But when you have the Holy Ghost in you, you just don't show up. <laughs> you have a you you have a purpose for which you have to fulfill and we praise God for that we praise God for seeing brother Briscoe in the house of the Lord today God bless your heart sir so good to see him and so good to see all of you amen in the house of the Lord today and we thank God amen that we're able to breathe we're able to have the activities of our limbs we're able to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth amen we have our congregation of prayer going up, but right now, according to the bulletin, amen, we have an insert in your bulletins, amen, for our opening hymn. So we want to stand together right now for our opening hymn, and then we're going to move right into our congregational prayer. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Great hymn of the church. Can we all stand, please? If you can, if you can stand. Amen. If you can. Let's sing together. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate all. Let angels prostrate all.
Everybody can be seated. And crown him. And crown him. Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise up in here today. He is worthy to be praised. Only God is worthy to be praised. Somebody can understand what I'm saying. This week has been a pretty rough week for some. But God had his grace and mercy on us. And we see each other again. All right, but before I, I get into the prayer, I just want to show y'all how good God is getting. Brother Lester, please stand. I want to show y'all how good God is. This brother right here will be celebrating 17 years clean from drugs and alcohol <laughs> tomorrow. If you don't know, it is hard to get one day. But for to get celeb celebrate 17, only God can do something like that. It's only by the grace of God. This wonderful brother sitting up here today is getting ready to celebrate 17 years. So I come to you, Heavenly Father. Lord, I say thank you. I say thank you for your grace and for your mercy. These days has not been easy, Lord. But we come to you to say thank you, Lord. And we ask that you will forgive us for our sins, dear Heavenly Father, because we have not been the men. We have not been the women that you need us to be, Heavenly Father. So we pray that you will wipe our slate clean. And forgive us for our sins, dear Heavenly Father. Send your Holy Spirit in this place today, dear Heavenly Father, to lead us and guide us through this service, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we come to you. There's a mother. There's a father. There's suffering today because they don't know where their child is. There's a grandmother who's praying right now. Lord, we ask that you would answer them prayers, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray for our communities, dear Heavenly Father. We pray for our children. We pray for our youth, Lord. We understand that it's not easy for them, dear Heavenly Father, to face this world, Lord. So we ask that you would come into their lives, dear Heavenly Father, and follow them throughout their life, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we praise you. We give you honor for all that you do, dear Heavenly Father. Without you, Lord, where would we be? So we ask that you come on in here, Queen's Chapel, United Methodist Church, today, touch our pastor as he deliver his message today. Touch our congregation, all those that's going through, dear Heavenly Father. Help us, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, because we need you. We need you every minute, every hour, Lord. We need you. We can't make it without you. Touch the ones that's grieving, Lord. Let them know that if they call on you, dear Heavenly Father, that you will heal, that you will be their comforter, dear Heavenly Father, comfort us, dear Heavenly Father, because now is a time of need, Lord. Touch our government, dear Heavenly Father. Help us, dear Heavenly Father. Go into Washington, D.C., dear Heavenly Father, and clean out the corruption that's going on, dear Lord. Go into our school systems and let them educate our kids, dear Heavenly Father. Stop thinking about a dollar and start thinking about their education. Lord, I come to you today with a cry for help. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, amen. Amen. As the choir comes to you, 
please lend your ears to hear. Let the church say amen. Song said, I feel Jesus in this place. Uh, good morning, Queen's Chapel. I can't hear y'all. Good morning, Queen's Chapel. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I feel Jesus in this place. I got to stick to the assignment. I don't know about you. I bought my Holy Spirit. I hope you bought yours. Early one Sunday morning, God changed my whole life. Brother George Smith surprised me this morning. I try to keep certain things under cover. Uh, but I am so grateful. As before we get into the recognitions of birthdays and anniversaries, I got to tell you what I've been hearing in my head all morning long. My wife will tell you when I'm on a spiritual realm, I hear music. I'm so grateful all I keep hearing is the song that says, if anyone should ever write my life story, Lord and mercy, for whatever reason, come on, Charles, there might be. Mm. God woke me up, he changed my life, and now I stand before thee. I know Brother Conway sings it, but the song says, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. I don't know if any of y'all can give a testimony. Has Jesus been the best thing? that ever happened to you when you was on your bed of affliction did Jesus come and wake you up and turn you around I know I'm not the only one in here I know that I am not the only one in here some of y'all been through hell and high water some of y'all have seen hell and seen death but Jesus 
is the best thing that ever happened to me. Oh, oh my, my, the best thing that ever happened to me. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, I, I try not to make a fuss about what God has done. Mama would have said a song that said, I got to clean up what I messed up. She said, boy, didn't I teach you better than that? Anyway, let's stay on point here as though, George, you did that. Pastor Butler, pardon me. But today is the 1st of April, right? So they say April flowers bring May. April showers bring May flowers. I'm all excited this morning. So in the month of April, as the rain came, some of you all made your interest into this world. So do we have any April birthdays this morning? Uh, if I could get you all to stand up for just a second. April birthdays. All right, Mr. Lila Parham. Um, <laughs> Uh, Perry's young daughter. Amen, amen, amen. I'm not going to pass the mic around to see how your ages are because there's a lot of women out there and I do not want to get my head chopped off. But we got a little song for you if Charles can, can lift it up. Now, I promise I won't sing, but y'all can sing with me. Amen? And happy birthday. Enjoy your month. The song just simply says... Happy birthday to ya, happy birthday to ya, happy birthday, happy birthday to ya, happy birthday to ya, happy birthday, happy Birthdays. I told Dr. Parham, I, I, I said, Doc, let me do the birthdays and anniversaries. I got a, a special lady in my life. She's back there in that choir loft. Y'all might see a lot of movement over on that side. Uh, her birthday's coming up. And I know the reason why I didn't try to pass the mic around for the women, because if you're anything like my wife, I'm going to put you on blast, honey. Y'all celebrate your birthday. For us poor men, it's a whole month. Can't just come in there one day. You got to party the whole month. Anyway, I'm getting used to it. Hey, help me, Holy Ghost. But I just wanted to thank you for being in my life, honey, and being my support. All right, so we got through the birthdays. Now, how many anniversaries? Yeah. Oh. Oh, you want to say your birthday? Oh, oh, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, come on now. Uh, April the 20th. April the 20th. April the 20th of 70. Oh, my Lord. Hey. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You bought your Holy Spirit this morning, I can tell. You thanking God for 70, 70 strong years. Amen. Amen. Well, you sure helped me out. I'm telling you. All right, now we're going to go to the anniversaries. How many of you all in the, in the month of April decided to, as the old folks say, jump the broom? Uh, some of you all decided and looked in each other's face and eyes and said, Goonie, goo goo, and the next thing you knew, you was at K Jewelers, and next thing you knew, we was at the, the, the altar. Amen. Amen. So we got some anniversaries out there. I'm going to start right here. Miss, Miss Collins?
35 years. Amen. 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 Gregory, I see you and your wife in the back of you now. You, you got to be careful. Don't mess up now. Uh, see, right behind you. <laughs> 36 years. April to what? Okay, April to 50. Is that right, Miss Linda? Okay, amen. <laughs> Come on. All right. 41. Wow. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 41 years. Okay, all right. <laughs> 48, 48, 54. Amen. Amen. God bless. Anybody else? Let me look behind me. Uh oh. You got something to say there, young man? Okay. April 5th, Brother Bernard's birthday. How many years? 77 years. Amen. We got to give God honor and praise for the life of him, too, as well. All right. For you anniversary folks, we want to say thank you for being an example. The Bible says a man who finds a wife finds a good thing. And y'all have definitely proven to this soldier, to this soul, that longevity is the key. Because all I see is prosperity in the eyes of these couples. Amen. Give a hand clap and praise. All right, now as I make my way out of the way, we often like to do this. This is for Sister Sonia and for some of you other. I'm going to bring up Dr. Gregory Parham as he gives a little public announcement before we get into the offering. So prepare your, your, your offerings and tithes as after Dr. Parham will be into offering. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lester. Okay, good morning, Queen's Chapel. Uh, one of the things we like to do on the first Sunday, of course, is to also just give you a, a brief update. And it's good to be able to report that the activity around COVID, the pandemic, is declining every day, every week. And that's a good thing, okay? Okay, this is the, the influenza season is essentially over for this year, okay? Uh, and the RSV, the respiratory syncytial virus, also is on the decline. So that's a good thing. Now, COVID every year has surprised us, okay? In the past two years, we've also experienced a summer surge, okay? There's no evidence of it just yet, okay? But just looking at, at past history is just something to be aware of. And so that's why the recommendation from the Centers for Disease Control is that this spring, and it is springtime now, uh, what did Lester say, April showers, okay? It's a good time particularly if you are as old as Brother Lynch right there. And if you remember, if you remember last month, okay, he said his Medicare card came, okay? All right, okay? Now, now he's been getting AARP, but his Medicare card came. So you know what that means. They find you, no matter where you are. You can be in the witness protection program. They will find you when you turn 65, okay? So if you are 65 or older, make sure, make sure, please, ma'am, please, sir, that you consider with your health care provider, your, your primary care physician, that you get the newest booster that they will have for COVID. Because, again, we don't know what the summer is going to bring, but we do know that, again, next fall and winter, COVID is going to come back around, okay? Now, I know that this week everyone has heard about avian influenza or bird flu, okay? It's another virus, okay? The influenza virus not only affects humans, but can also affect uh, other species of animals as well. But what was new this week is that the, the uh, avian influenza now has spilled over into cattle, okay? Particularly dairy cattle, okay? Now, I already talked to Miss Marcia, because you know she's a baker, but, you know, they had to uh, destroy two million egg-laying birds last week, and so you know what that's going to do to the price of eggs, okay? So when she raises her prices by 50 cents, you'll know why, okay? <laughs> Only 50 cents, okay? <laughs> but, but again, and then the, 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 the important thing is that they also had some spillover into at least one human case. Very mild, okay? But it just goes to show what happens in the natural world when these viruses are able to mix, okay? The virus has been having conventions, okay? Trying to figure out different ways to infect different species, including people, 
Okay, so we just have to continue to be vigilant around these kinds of things. And so um, just wanted to share that with you. No need to be concerned about the, the avian flu and the spillover into the dairy cattle. It won't affect the price of milk just yet, okay? But, uh, and we don't expect it to even in the future because it, it, it's only a few cows that are getting infected, but we have now learned that it can happen. And any time it can move from one species to another, the concern is, well, can it then move from that species or any other species into humans, you know? And so um, that's our public health uh, update for today, and I thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday to all our April birthdays, and happy anniversary to everyone who is celebrating. Happy anniversary. Amen. For this month, we want the ushers to now prepare themselves as we were preparing for our offering. Amen. We want to, amen, just encourage you to continue to give because it is more blessed to give than to receive. And we praise God for that. Amen. Amen. We want to bow our heads as we ask the Lord's blessing upon the offering. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your keeping power. Thank you, Lord God, for providing all that we stood in need of. Food on the table, clothes on our back, shelter over our heads. We thank you so much, Lord God. Even when we come up short, Lord, you always made a way out of no way. Now, Lord, we ask that you would bless this offering that we are receiving. Lord, we ask that you would provide it for this ministry, that we will continue to do the work that you have ordained us to do in the kingdom of God. And then as your people are given, Lord, I pray a special blessing that you would open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings for every giver, every person that's in this place, that they will know, Lord God, that it is such a wonderful, wonderful experience of just loving you, Lord God, and showing our love for you through our giving. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Offertory team is taking their place. Ushers have the floor. Choir is coming to give us a selection.
So, so it's good to be able to read the scripture. It's good to know, to see, and I don't need my magnifying glass. Okay, now, now I'm still probably, I know some of you just haven't seen me like this because I've worn glasses since I was five years old. 
And that was a long time ago. Okay. But uh, it's good to be able to stand here and see clearly. So all you beautiful people, I mean, I knew you look good, okay, up close, okay? But now you look good far away, okay? So, so I'm glad. I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it, okay? Won't you please stand for the reading of the scriptures? First coming from the book of Nehemiah, the prophet Nehemiah, chapter 2, verses 4 through 9. This is in the NIV. It is in your bulletins this morning. The king said to me, what is it you want? Come on. Then I prayed to the God of heaven, and I answered the king, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. Amen. Then the king, with the queen sitting beside him, you know, you always have to have the women in place, okay, given the right advice, okay? Then the king, with the queen sitting beside him, asked me, how long will your journey take, and when will you get back? It pleased the king to send me, so I set a time. I also said to him, if it pleases the king, may I have letters to the governors of Trans-Euphrates so that they will provide me safe conduct until I arrive in Judah. And may I have a letter to Asaph, keeper of the royal park, so he will give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel by the temple and for the city wall and for the residence I will occupy. Mm. And because the gracious hand of my God was on me, Amen. the king granted my request. Amen. So I went to the governors of Trans-Euphrates and gave them the king's letters. The king had also sent army officers and cavalry with me. Moving now to the New Testament, the Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 1 through 8, and this is in the New Living Translation. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. Yeah. I am writing to God's holy people in Ephesus who are faithful followers of Christ Jesus. May God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Amen. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has show, showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. Amen. Our final reading comes from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 8 through 20 in the New International um, Version. So the women hurried away from the tomb afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to him, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city, and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, he will 
we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. May the Lord add his richest blessing to the seeing, the reading, and the hearing of his holy and righteous word. Amen.
of Jesus Christ. For oh, it is God's power of salvation to everyone, everyone that believes. It's to
Can we give God a hand clap and praise? Come on and praise the Lord. We are not ashamed of the gospel, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Woo! Glory to God. Mm. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Mm. Glory to God. Come on, pray with me, church. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you so much for this day that we've come into this place to worship you, for you to impact our lives and to continue to fill us with heaven's best. Now, Lord, through me or in spite of me, let your word, Lord, come forth. Let it find us where we are. That it will, Lord God, inform us, encourage us. It will move us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. And let the church say, Amen. 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 If you would get your bulletins, and uh, I want to go into our message today just for a few moments. For this is the second Sunday of, of Easter in, and we're moving towards Pentecost. Pentecost Sunday is May the 19th, 2024. So as we're moving towards Pentecost, there will be several things that we will be doing and I'll be lifting that up as we are moving towards Pentecost. But there are some preparation that has to be made because as we begin preaching on Easter Sunday about the impact, that's going to be our theme as we're working towards Pentecost Sunday, that we want to make an impact. We want to prepare ourselves to make an impact. We're, I'm, I'm so proud of Queen's Chapel because Queen's Chapel has variety of ministries that we are doing for the kingdom of God. We're making an impact. We're making an impact on many souls who have encountered the ministries here from the homeless ministry to the addiction ministry to the bereavement ministry to the knitting ministry uh, to the ministry of the Bible study and uh, all of the, um, you know, teams that we have with regard to the Bible studies and then to our dynamic outreach ministry. Um, that we're touching lives. In fact, we're getting ready to go back into the schools. We're getting ready to honor our teachers. We're going to let you know uh, how we're going to be doing that. We're going to be serving breakfast to teachers, um, just letting them know that we love them and that we're encouraging them. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're making an impact. But in order to make an impact for the kingdom, you must prepare yourself. You have to prepare yourself. You just can't jump out there. You know, you just can't jump out there and say, I want to work for the Lord because there is an enemy that has come against the church. The enemy didn't come against this building. He's coming against the church, which is you and I. That's why sometimes, Sometimes we have these problems and trials because it's designed to discourage us. It's designed to 
to, uh, uh, to limit us and to make us believe that we cannot be the church that God want us to be. Um, if you look at the scripture, look in your bulletin, look back at the scripture of Matthew 28, before Jesus has this meeting with the disciples, he gives them the great commission. There was an undercurrent that was happening. There was an undercurrent that was happening. What was the undercurrent? Well, after the women saw Jesus and they reported it to the disciples by telling them, we, you need to meet Jesus. But here's the undercurrent that was taking place. The undercurrent was in verse uh, 12 when the chief priests had met with the elders and devise a plan. They gave the soldiers a large sum of money. They told them, you are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. Now the reason why they had to be paid was because these were the same soldiers that was guarding the tomb when the angels appeared and rolled away the stone. And the Bible says that the, that the soldiers fell as if they were dead. And when they got up, they looked inside the tomb, Jesus was gone. So they hurried back to the priests. This is where the undercurrent starts. The priest told them, I'm gonna give you this money that if anybody asks you what happened, why is Jesus gone from the tomb? We don't want you to tell them that he resurrected from the tomb. No, no, we don't want you to tell them that. But we're going to pay you to tell a lie. The most devastating force that has come against the church even today is the lie. We're going to pay you to lie. You tell anybody who comes to you, you are to say the disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. Now, there's something wrong with that story. Look at somebody say, there's something wrong with that story. Because they should have been killed. If you're asleep on your guard duty and what you are guarding disappears, you should have been put to death. You shouldn't even be alive to even give any explanation. <laughs> Can I get a witness? But we're going to pay you because we don't, we don't know. We don't know what's happening here. I, I don't understand why this has happened, but this is, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you this money, and I want you to report to anyone who asks you what happened you tell them that the disciples came during the night while we were asleep and they stole the body. And if this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble because we know the consequences if we tell them that you were asleep on the post. We know the governor is going to kill you. So we're going to speak for you. Don't worry about it, okay? Your family's safe. And you're safe. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. This story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. That Jesus was stolen. He did not resurrect from the grave. That's the undercurrent. That undercurrent now has, has now developed into many other undercurrents to where now the enemy has come against the church to where we cannot do the work that God has ordained us to do. But he still sends us out. He still sends us out to, to, uh, uh, to make disciples for Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness? So just know that when, when we prepare ourselves to do the work 
of ministry, there's always going to be an undercurrent. Whenever you introduce yourself as a person that has values, that have Christian values, and people will see the way you act, they know that you are different from the world, there's going to be an undercurrent that's going to come against you. Whenever you teach your children to be nice, whenever you teach your children to love one another, whenever you teach your children to act right in school and not like, like the other children, just prepare for that undercurrent that's coming against your kids, coming against your grandchildren. Can I get a witness in this place? But Jesus stands with the disciples. He has this meeting with the disciples. The Bible says, and look at the 16th verse, then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubted. Why did they doubt? Because of this lie. Wait a minute, is this really him? Did he really die? Is this really him? And they're seeing him. They see a miracle in front of them. Just like today, they are seeing the results of what we're doing in the community. They're seeing the results of lives being transformed and, and being changed. Amen. Especially those people who knew you when. And so when they look at you, they say, is he for real? Is she for real? Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> Can I get a witness? Some even doubted. Can you imagine that? Looking at the resurrected Jesus. Looking at Jesus speaking to him, speaking to the crowd in his resurrected body. They see the nail print hands. They see the wounds on his body. And some still stood and doubted. We still have that doubt today. Come on, somebody. Can I get a witness? I'm, I'm going to say a little bit more about that later. But this is what Jesus tells us. He tells, and the, and the disciples really are representing the church. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And then look at the 18th verse. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go, even in spite of the lies, go. In spite of what people might say about you, go. No matter what you think about what is happening, go. Look at somebody say, go. Just don't leave here and go home. Go. Tell somebody about what the goodness of the Lord has done. Go. Tell somebody how your life has been transformed. Go! Tell somebody why you are the way that you are. Go! Let somebody know why you act the way that you act. He said, go and do what? Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. He said, go. Go not only to this community. He said, go to the nations. I see Queen's Chapel ministering to the nations. I see our outreach ministry exploding to the nations. Not only to this community, but to this nation. Don't think that God is, has, has weakened Queen's Chapel to where we can't go any further but the community. God said, I have empowered you to go to the nations. To go to people outside of your circle. Can I get a witness? He said, go. He said, go. Look at somebody and say, go. Go to the nations and amen, amen. Preach to them. Baptize them in the name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Spirit. And teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, King James Version said, and lo. I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. That means when the rapture comes, 
Amen. When the, when, 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 well, well, we'll go into another sermon on that. Amen. But, 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 but he says, go. He said, I'll be with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Even though that undercurrent of evil is coming against you. He said, I've empowered you. I empowered you to make an impact. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. So, the reason why I gave us, we went back into the uh, book of Nehemiah. I'm not going to be long. I just want to let you know. The reason why we went back into the book of Nehemiah, because now in the second chapter, Nehemiah now becomes this image of today's church. Nehemiah metaphorically now becomes this image of today's church is what I started out saying is that if we're going to make an impact even further than what we are right now, there's a preparation period. We have to prepare ourselves for this. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. And so, 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 so after, after the Lord speaks to Nehemiah, Nehemiah now comes in to the king. Look at Nehemiah, look at your bulletin. Look at Nehemiah 2, 4 through 6. The king said to me, what is it you want? Read that. Say it. What, what is it? What is it you want? Yeah, say it again. What is it you want? Say it again. What is it? The powers that be is asking Queen's Chapel, what is it? that you want. What is God telling you to do? Where is God directing you as the church? What is it that you want? That's what they're asking us. What is it that you want? Where, what, where, where, who, who do you want to bless? Who do you want to reach? Who do you want to touch? What young people do you want to transform? That's what the, 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 the king represents the government. The government is asking us. I don't care what you think about the government, the money is there. He said, what is it that you want? I'm here to give whatever you want. He asked Nehemiah, what is it that you want? And then Nehemiah, real quick, he said, Lord, remember the prayer? He prayed to God. God, remember what I asked you in the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to make this move. That's why we need, I know we got grant writers in here. We have people that know how to approach the government. We have people in this congregation that know how to talk, know how to speak. Can I get a witness? Don't look at me like I'm crazy because I'm not crazy. Amen. Amen. They know how to speak. God, God has placed you. You have become a member of this community of faith for a reason. Because the Lord says, when, he, when I say go, everybody goes according to their abilities. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Good God Almighty. So he says, Lord, you remember the prayer that I asked you? And so now I'm going to approach this government. I'm going to ask this king. And he answered, look at the fifth verse. He answered, king, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, let me just, just, just let him send me to the city of Judah where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. Then the king with the queen sitting beside him asked him, how long will your journey take? When, 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 when will you get back? It pleases the king to, to send me, so, so I set the time. In other words, he gave him all the parameters. He gave him all the parameters. That's why when we go into 501c3s, you got to really give your vision, you got to give your purpose, you got to give everything. You got to write all that stuff out, you got to plan all that stuff out. So Nehemiah came to the king, he already had his plan in place. You don't go to anybody who is in authority and you say, you know, I don't know, the Lord sent me. No, I want to know what you're doing. Do you have a plan? 
Can I get a witness? And Nehemiah had the plan. He had it all mapped out. If it pleases the king to send me. So I set the time. I told him how much time I would need to rebuild this time to make an impact there in Judah. I also said to him, if it pleases the king, and, and look at all these other plans that he made. If it pleases the king, may I have letters to the governors of trans-Euphrates so that they will provide me safe conduct until I arrive in Judah. Look at, I mean, he's setting all this stuff up because he's making the plan, because he, all of this, as, as, as we begin to read all the way down, in fact, as we go all the way down to all the people that he wants uh, uh, safe passage through, look at verse eight. And may I have a letter to Asaph, keeper of the royal park, because I need some timber, you know. So he will give me timber to make beans for the gates of the synagogue by the temple and for the city wall and for the residence I will occupy. For the residence I will occupy. And because the king says yes to this, why? And because the gracious hand of my God was upon me, the king granted my request. Because the gracious hand, that's why this sermon today is called when the gracious hand of God is upon you. When the gracious hand of God is upon you. I want to give you some good news today because for each and every one of you, the gracious hand of God is upon each and every one of you. The gracious hand, look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, the gracious hand of God is upon you. Now look at your other neighbor. Say, neighbor, the gracious hand of God is upon me. Yeah. It's upon every one of you. The problem that we have, we have not taken. Isn't it wonderful to know that when Jesus said in Matthew that I will be with you, until the end of the age, that means his gracious hand is upon you. That means that his presence is with you. His favor is upon you. It does not mean, listen, just because one person said no does not mean the gracious hand of, of, of God isn't upon you. No, 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 no. The gracious hand of God is upon you. Look at this really quick because I'm getting ready to end here. Listen, look at this really quick. The gracious hand was upon me. He says, he says, listen, he says in verse 8, and may I have a letter of Asaph, keeper of the royal park, so he will give me timber to make beans for the gates of the citadel by the temple and for the city wall and for the residence I will occupy. And because the gracious hand of God was upon me, the king granted my request. Some of you can testify to this. If we were to pass the mic between everybody in this place, you can give a story of how the gracious hand of God was upon you because you are where you are because the grace of God can I get a witness is upon you can I get a witness are you making an impact in or through your church in your community in your school in your occupation in your business in your neighbor I'm, I, I want to ask you a question I want to re you really really Examine yourself. Are you really making an impact? Are you showing love by giving to those who do not have? That's making an impact. Are you taking the time to mentor somebody? Are you speaking up for someone who cannot really speak for themselves? 
Are you volunteering your time at a facility that helps people in some way and they can't pay you, but you're there because you love the Lord? Are you really making an impact? That's what I want to know. Spending, are, are you spending, listen, are you spending quality time with your spouse and children? That's making an impact. Can I get a witness? You, you, you might say, I don't know my purpose, so how can I make an impact? How can I make a difference? I got good news for you. Somebody say good news. God has created every one of us with a purpose and call, and, and, and he has called us to fulfill that purpose on earth with our abilities and with the gifts that he has given us. He has made a way for us to do it. All we need to do is what? The Lord, I, the, song, the songwriter said, if you make the first step, he'll make two, he'll make three. Write, write this scripture down real quick. Write this scripture down. Romans 12 and 6. Romans 12 and 6. Romans 12 and 6. Just write it down. When you get home, you can read it. Romans 12 and 6 in the NIV. He says, in his grace. In other words, another phrase of another translation said, because of his grace. God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. Because of his grace. You didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. You may have been a rascal like me when you were out in the world. You didn't deserve to work for the kingdom. But it's by his grace, God has given every believer, every believer, every person that is born naturally is born with a natural gift. We'll get to that a little later. I want to, because this is going to be a little series that's heading up to Pentecost. We'll get to that in a little bit. But every one of us is born with a natural ability. But when you're born again, when you receive Christ as your personal Savior, he gives you a spiritual gift on top of your ability. Good God Almighty. And so, and, and that's by his grace. Good God Almighty. So, so what God is telling us in this verse is that when you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you became a talented person. Stop telling yourself you're not talented. The reason why we say that because we look into other people's backyards. I wish I could do what he does or she does. So I'm not as talented. But I'm going to tell you something. God has given you a talent. He's given you an ability that nobody else can do. Can I get a witness? And in God's kingdom, there is no such thing as a no-talented person. Everybody can do something. Can I get a witness? Amen. And when, and when you're born again, you become part of, of, this, of this magnificent force, this magnificent uh, 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 thing that is called the church. Amen. Amen. And, when, and, 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 and now you become part of the body of Christ. Look at, look at, your, notes. Look at your notes. Look at your notes. That's, that, that's why I gave you the definition of the church. The church, the church is a local assembly of believers empowered by the Holy Spirit to become kingdom focused and disciple strong. You're empowered by the Holy Spirit. That, this is, this, I, I include, listen, I included our vision. Our vision here at Queen's Chapel is that we are becoming kingdom focused and disciples strong. Kingdom focused means that we're focusing on who is Lord and ruler of our lives. That's why we do what we do. That's why we act the way that we act. That's why we move the way that we move. That's why people cannot stop us. They, 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 they can't stop God's program. Because as long as you stay focused on God's kingdom, good God Almighty, nothing can stop you. Oh, there'll be some times when you got some little rascals that want to try to circumvent and want to try to talk about you behind your back and try to uh, cheat you and all that kind of stuff. But when you have the kingdom of God, 
that is on your side, you don't have nothing to worry about because why? You stay focused. You stay focused. That's that 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 is the uh, uh, a way that the enemy wants to come in. He wants to steal your focus. He wants you to focus on the enemy. He wants you to focus on what's happening. He wants you to focus on when I lost the job. He wants you to focus on because I got having problems in my marriage. He wants you to focus on all that and just all that negative stuff. But if you focus on the Lord. That's why we're kingdom focused. Look at somebody say, I'm kingdom focused. Good God Almighty. That's why they said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness and all these other things shall be added to you. Can I get a witness? And we are disciples strong. Why? Because we are a congregation that believe in the great commission that we are to make disciples. We are to make disciples. We are to win people to Christ. That's how you make disciples. And when they get in here, we're to teach them. We're to develop them. Disciples are not just born out of the mother's womb. They have to be taught how to be disciples. Can I get a witness? That's why we're kingdom focused and disciples strong. So we are assembly of believers empowered by God. Uh, to become kingdom focused and disciple strong. So, 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 so this is why I gave you the definition of church. It's the ecclesia. Somebody say the ecclesia. We're called out ones. We're called out. That's why we're different. We're called out. I'm getting ready to end. We're, we, are, we are called out. We are called out ones. That's, that's the church. We're called out. We're different. I want to be different. Come on, somebody. I want to be different. I want to be different. I don't want to hang out with people that are misusing people and lying and, and cheating and drinking and all that kind of stuff. No, I'm called out. Good God Almighty. Can I get a witness? I'm the ecclesia. Called out of what? Look at 1 Peter 2, 9. Did I give you that? 1 Peter, let's read it together. But you are a what? And what else? And what else? God's what? That what? Who calls you? Good God Almighty. If you don't have anything to praise God about, you praise God for bringing you out of darkness. You praise God for bringing you out of sin. You praise God that I'm not the way I used to be. Good God Almighty. He changed me. Gave me a new walk. Gave me a new talk. Good God Almighty. I may not see my name up in lights. I may not read about my name in the newspaper, but I'm going to let you know that I'm a changed person. Because he brought me out of darkness. Darkness means sinfulness. Into the marvelous light. Light means righteousness. Can I get a witness? That's why we have to fight against it. You have to fight for your salvation. Every day when you get up, you got to learn how to fight against it because the enemy will try to come and try to get you to go in the wrong direction. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Can I get a witness? You got to fight. You got to be ready to fight. You got to say, devil, you a liar. I'm no longer in darkness. Good God Almighty. Can I get a witness? That's why we're that's why we're the church. So so it's the gracious, it's the gracious hand of God that is upon us. It's the gracious hand of God that is upon us. Look at your notes here, real quick. Real quick. Watch this. Why was the gracious hand of the Lord upon Nehemiah? Because now in the New Testament, the Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came, empowered us. We read about the grace of God, amen, in the New Testament, but Nehemiah's in the Old Testament. How was the gracious hand of God upon Nehemiah? Look at number one. Nehemiah had an active prayer life. He was always in conversation with the Lord. While you're driving to work, you can be in conversation with the Lord. Lord, I know I'm going into these devils, and I know I got to do that. I know I got to face. <laughs> so he's in constant prayer. Lord, I got to face the king. I don't know what he's going to say. 
but I need your grace. I need favor. I'm trying to apply for this job. I'm trying to get into college. I'm trying to do everything that I can. So you stay in constant prayer. That's why the Bible says man ought to always pray and not think. You're always in prayer. Lord, you help me. Help me to say the right thing because people do get on my nerves, but help me to say the right thing. Help me to deal with my family because my family, sometimes they're crazy. So help me to deal with my family. Help me to deal with people that are of higher echelon and they look down on me. They think I don't know nothing. Lord, give me grace. Give me favor. Can I get a witness? Look at someone said, I know he's right. Yeah, yeah. Nehemiah had an active prayer life. Number two, Nehemiah confessed his sins to the Lord. He confessed his sins to the Lord because why? When you don't confess your sins, that means there is something between you and God. So every day you must confess your sins. Look what Nehemiah said in Nehemiah 1, 6 and 7. He said, I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's family, had committed against you. We have acted very wickedly towards you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws you and your servant Moses. Listen, listen, Lord, please forgive me. I'm going back into this circle of people, but Lord, if I said anything yesterday that was not pleasing in your sight, Lord, cleanse me. Forgive me. Good God Almighty. If I acted like I knew it all, if I did anything, said anything, I, I, I looked at anything that was not pleasing your sight, Lord, forgive me for my sins. So as you're praying to the Lord, you're constantly asking him, Lord, forgive me for my sins. That's how the gracious hand of God was upon him. Because God can get to him. When you're in sin, God can't get to you. God is around you, but he can't get to you. Can I get a witness? So the blood of Jesus Christ has to cleanse you from your sin. But if you deny it by saying, I can live any kind of way I want to live, and Lord, I still want your blessing, the Lord said, oh, it ain't going to work that way. Can I get a witness? So he confessed his sins. He confessed his sins. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our debt as we forgive those who trespass against us. Number three, the reason why the gracious hand of God was upon me was because Nehemiah sought the Lord through prayer. He not only prayed, but he sought the Lord. So the Lord want us to pray, but he don't want us to be selfish all the time. We do have needs. Tell the Lord about your needs, but yet at the same time, seek him. Lord, you have me in these circle of people for a reason. I'm dealing with these, 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 these people that I just cannot get to. You, 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 you have me there for a reason. You have me in this class for a reason. You have me in these positions for a reason. You allow me to come in contact with these people for a reason. What is your will? Lord, I seek you. Lord, and, and Nehemiah wanted to go back to to Judah to rebuild the walls. But Lord, what is your will? How can I do this? How do you want me to do this? Because sometimes the Lord may want you to shut your mouth. He may, he may want you to get into the meeting and sit. Can I get a witness? Lord, what is your will? Because I don't know what your will is. I want to smack them. I want to curse them out because they know they were wrong. But Lord, what is your will? What is your will? So the, 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 the gracious hand of God was upon him because Nehemiah sought. Look at Jeremiah 29, 13. Let's read it together. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. 
Lord, I need you. Lord, this won't get done, not unless you go with me. Not unless you make the way, Lord God. Not unless you speak, Lord. In the name of Jesus, can I get a witness? Is this helping somebody? Watch this. Number four, Nehemiah. The reason why the gracious hand of God was upon Nehemiah was because Nehemiah, this is, this is a big one. Nudge somebody besides you. This is a big one. This is a big one. Nehemiah believed God was going to come through. He believed God was going to come through for him. If you're praying to God and asking him to lead and guide you, and you don't believe that God's going to make a way, you're sabotaging yourself. you got to believe it. If God can raise Jesus from the dead... God can resurrect a job. God can resurrect a marriage. God can resurrect the, he can resurrect relationship. God can change situations, but you got to believe that God is going to do it. Lord, I know you're going to do it. I have no doubt in my mind that you're going to do it. Look at Mark 11, 23 through 24, because Jesus come through this place as he is on his way to the cross, and he sees this, 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 uh, 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 this fig tree that was not bearing fruit, and he cursed the fig tree. The next time they passed it, they saw that there was no more figs on the tree. Look at Mark 11, 23 through 24. This is Jesus speaking. Truly, I tell you, because the, the disciples said, look, Lord, the tree that you actually spoke to, the tree that you actually, brothers and sisters, don't you know that you have power in your words? Somebody come to you and they, and they try to sabotage you. They try to talk about you. You can say in the blood of Jesus. You will not speak to me this way. Good God Almighty. Can I get a witness? Yeah, yeah. And so, and so, and so Jesus turns to them and says, truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, mountain means problem, mountain means situation, mountain means those, 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 those forces that come against you. He said, he say to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea. And does not doubt in their mind or in their heart, but believe that what they say will happen. It will be done for them. Do you see what I'm saying here? After you seek the Lord, Lord, how do you want this to be done? But Lord, if you want that to be done, it's impossible because I don't even have I don't even have clout. I don't have the position. But God said, believe God. Amen. Believe God. He said, I'll make the way. All you have to do is make the first step. He said, I'll make the way. So you have to believe in your heart. Believe that what they say will happen. It will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. It will be yours. Now, we're not talking about this million dollar lottery thing. Now, don't, don't get me wrong here, okay? Don't be going to the Lord and say, Lord, please give me this number, please. Let me have the right number. God, I pray that I will pay my tithes. No, we're not talking about that. <laughs> we'll pay the church off, yeah. Amen. Amen. Bring it in here. Yeah, you're going to win it. Bring it in here. Amen. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own. Had thy given thee. Bless it now. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Bless your heart. Amen. <laughs> well, we don't ask you at the door, how did you win your money or how did you get your money this week? Amen. Just bring it. We'll bless it. Amen. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what God's will is for your life. When you're fulfilling God's will, when you're fulfilling his word, he says, if you ask, he said, and believe it, it shall be done. Can I get a witness? Here's the last one. Here's the last one. And we get ready to have communion. Here's the last one. 
Nehemiah, the reason why the gracious hand of God was upon Nehemiah was because Nehemiah was obedient to God's word. He was obedient. He's going to tell you what to do. He's going to tell you how to do it. He's going to tell you, I want you to believe that I can do it. But one thing you have to do, you have to believe and you have to be obedient to what I tell you. Peter was on the boat. As we get ready to, to, to go into communion, he was on the boat. And Jesus was coming, walking on the water. And they thought it was a ghost. And they wondered, who in the world is this? Peter was the only one who was so bold to look out and say, that is the Lord. And he says, come. He said, in fact, he told Peter, if, listen, if, or Peter asked him, he said, if you believe, if you are the Christ, if you are who you said you are, bid me to come. And the Lord said, come. And Peter steps out the boat and begin to walk on the water. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but some of you are still in the boat. You're afraid to get out the boat and walk. You're afraid. The Lord said, I'm with you. You're going to make an impact, but you're afraid of their faces. You're afraid of the storms. You're afraid of what's going on. But the Lord said, I'm with you. You're going to make an impact. You're going to make a difference in people's lives. But you got, listen, if you're going to walk on water, you have to get out of the boat. You got to make a step. Can I get a witness? You have to make a step. You can't do this by yourself. If you make one step, he'll make two. But God said you got to believe it. Can I get a witness? You got to believe it. So as Jesus prepares, as the communion stewards come, Jesus told his disciples to go to, to the upper room and prepare the upper room for the, for the Passover meal. And he told them that he was going to have this meal with them. And they obeyed him. As the ministerial staff comes, it's in your bulletins. Is it, is it behind me? Oops. Okay. Where's my bulletin? Okay. If you can follow me in your bulletins. This is how we consecrate and, and prepare the elements, the sacraments. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and a good. It is right and is good. A joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, before the mountains were brought forth, you had formed the earth mm -hmm. from everlasting to everlasting. You alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in the image and breathed into us the breath of life. When you turned away and our, our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made a covenant to be our sovereign God, 
and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. You sent a star to guide wise men to where the Christ was born, and in your signs and witnesses in every age and through all the world, you have led your people from far places to his light. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's suffering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ will come again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us who are in this sanctuary. To every man, woman, boy, and girl, let your Holy Spirit be poured out to them. Let your Holy Spirit also be poured out on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit Make us one in Christ. By your spirit, make us one with each other. By your spirit, make us one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. <laughs> and one day we will feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray when we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Honor. Thank you. 
As we had just mentioned on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, take this and eat it and they drink together. The Bible says after they sat, he took the cup. After he gave thanks to the Lord, he gave it to his disciples. He said, drink from it, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant. Drink ye all. Remember that as often as you eat of this bread and drink from this cup, you do remember the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we continue to be the people that God has called us to be, let us remember that God will never leave us nor forsake us. He will empower us. He will give us what we stand in need of if we believe. And the gracious hand of God will be upon each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Come on, choir. Sing it, choir. Sing it. God, a hand clap and praise. God bless you. Let us all stand upon our feet. We would be remiss if we did not open the doors of the church. Maybe there's someone here today that don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you have never opened your heart and said, Lord, come into my heart. I believe that you are the Christ the son of the living God. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you rose from the grave on the third day. And I believe you can live in my heart through the power of the Holy Ghost. If you're here today and you've never had anyone to pray that prayer with you, we are here today. My ministerial staff is here. We're here today to help you to move from darkness into the marvelous light. 
so you can be part of this wonderful, wonderful place called the church. We thank God. Maybe, maybe you're here today and you know the Lord as your personal Savior. You've been traveling for some time and you've been looking for a house of prayer to come and to receive the word of God, similar to what you received today. You come to the right place at the right time. If you're here today, we open the doors of the church that you may come and join Queen's Chapel. Why don't you come? Total praise to... Come on, choir, sing that for us. Let us look to the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you raise your hand with me? May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. May the gracious hand of God be upon you. May he empower you to do his holy and divine will. May he give you the desire to seek him while he may be found. May he bless your family. May he bless you going in and coming out. And may the Spirit of God be with you now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let all the people of God sing together. Let the church, let the church, let the church say, Amen. Let's sing it together. Let the 
church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Come on. Let the church. Come on, let's sing it again. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Bless you. We will see you next Sunday. Bless your heart. Go in the peace of the Lord.